shown to us in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. and Lord, we're just rejoicing this morning in his coming. And Lord, that he is more than just a, a babe in a manger. And Lord, he's conquering king and coming Lord. And as we think about his first advent, Lord, we can't help but think that you're coming again. And even so, come Lord Jesus. Pray now that you would quiet in our hearts for a few moments, Lord, as we consider your coming. And Lord, help us to keep in focus this Christmas season, Lord, you and the mission that you were on and the accomplishment of it and all that we can have in you. And Lord, as always, we pray if there's someone here this morning that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as there's their Savior and, and coming King, that today might be, Lord, their new birth date. And we'll thank you for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. It was said of Julius Caesar that he had conquered all the civilized world. He was able to unite and expand the Roman Empire because he was both politically gifted and a great general in warfare. Toward the end of his reign... However, there arose an, an uprising in a far eastern country. He himself took the troops out to a distant land to crush the rebellion. After defeating the rebel army, Julius Caesar sent back a message to tell the Roman Senate of his victory. The messenger could have carried thousands and thousands of words telling how the battle raged until finally the emperor had put down and crushed the rebellion. But the message brought from the emperor was only three words. I came, I saw, I conquered. Julius Caesar's military feats were quite quite impressive. He conquered the, all the civilized world and built the Roman Empire into a very impressive kingdom. But the truth is, it, like all other kingdoms, did not last. Shortly after his historic proclamation, he died. And not long after that, the Roman Empire split apart and collapsed. I want to tell you, though, about another king and another kingdom that will last forever. In fact, I, I purpose to have four points this morning. I don't know if we'll get all of them, but thinking of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We, I, I like laying his message this morning. We have to get past the babe in the manger. It almost seems like everybody, everybody this time of year thinks about Jesus, but they always think about, again, the babe in the manger, the babe in the manger. And, and even, even, the, even the most uh, calloused and hardened seem to turn their attention to the babe in the manger. But the truth of the matter is it was more than that. Christ was more than that. Christ came. As a great king, and saw and conquered and established a kingdom that will last forever. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government 
and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with just judgment and justice from henceforth even forever. First of all, I would remind you that Jesus did in fact come. Again, our text says, but when the fullness of time was come. The timing of his coming was perfect. In God's timetable, when the exact religious, cultural, and political conditions demanded by his perfect plan were in place, Jesus came into the world. God sent forth his Son. God literally moved all of heaven and earth in preparation for the coming of his Son. And when the time was perfect, he came. Secondly, he came in a perfect way. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. We read of it in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 35. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent forth from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at the saying, cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? That is, she not had relationships that would lead to the bearing of a child. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Jesus came born of a virgin. This was a perfect way, and I would tell you this morning that it had, it absolutely had to be this way. Because every man and woman born since Adam and Eve were born under the curse. It passes from all parents to all children. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. The problem is that Jesus came on a mission that required him to not have a sin nature. If Jesus had been born of an earthly father and an earthly mother, he would have inherited a sin nature and would have sinned. But since he was born of the Holy Spirit, he was human in that he had a human mother, but he was also divine and perfectly sinless because of the virgin birth. So Jesus came, perfect timing in a perfect way. Secondly, he conquered. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. The little babe in the manger was a conqueror. Jesus came to conquer the curse of sin and death. He came to reverse the consequences of the fall. He came to redeem sinful man. To redeem means to purchase. He came to buy us out of our fallen condition and restore us to what God originally had in mind for his creation, and that is union with him forever. 
For that to happen, Christ had to defeat sin and death. To do that, he had to become sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21, I bet you've never heard this one. For he hath made him, capital H, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin. That is, he knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, Christ came to undo what the first Adam did. <coughs> Excuse me. Romans 5, 17 through 21 for if by one man's offense, again, Adam, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And by the way, that means superabounded. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. That little baby was on a mission. A mission to conquer sin and to allow or make a way for us to be fully forgiven, reconciled to God, and possess the eternal life that he originally tended that we might have. John Wesley said Christ will by his death destroy the power of death, take away the sting of the first death, and prevent the second. It was Jonathan Edwards who said Christ came into the world to destroy the works of the devil. And this was the very thing that he did. The blood and death of Christ, the cross, was the devil's own weapon, and with his weapon he was overthrown. Hallelujah. As David cut off Goliath's head with his own sword. John Owen said no proposition can be more plain than this. That the power of Satan was destroyed by the death of Christ. Andrew Fuller said churches are the armies of the Lamb. The grand object of whose existence is to extend the Redeemer's kingdom. Andrew, I'm sorry, B.B. Warfield said as the risen one has become the head over all things, and that he must reign until he hath put all things under his feet. Our brother, who has been, who has like us, been acquainted with death, he it is who rules over the ages, the ages that are past, the ages that are passing, and the ages that are yet to come. If our hearts should fail us, as we stand over against the host of wickedness which surround us, let us encourage ourselves and one another with the great reminder. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead of the seed of David. Both the Old Testament and New Testament, Christ is pictured as the suffering lamb, but that's only part of it because he had to suffer to conquer death. But the truth is, not only did he come, and conquered, but he left. After dying on the cross and being buried, he rose from the grave, and after appearing to his disciples, he ascended to the Father, having completed his mission. This is the gospel message, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 8. For sake of time, I won't read it this morning, but Christ came and conquered and went back to the Father. In Acts chapter 1, verse 6 through 11, when they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will at this time, will, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in on his own power, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me 
both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, and I love this, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. John 14, 21, 28 rather. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I go to the Father for my Father is greater than thee. And then the beloved words of John 14, 1 and 2. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Christ came, he conquered, he left, and lastly, he's coming back. John chapter 14 again, verses 1 through 4. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That's not the end, though. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. In Acts chapter 1, verse 9, And when he had spoken these things, while they, they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And in verse 11, uh, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which was taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Then in the great resurrection chapter, 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or literally die, but we shall all be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Jesus came. Jesus conquered death for us. Jesus left, but he's coming back to get us. Are you ready for his return? You know, it's easy, again, to get lost in what the world emphasizes. <clears throat> right now, it's emphasizing, again, the babe in the manger. But that was just the beginning of his mission. He came, he conquered sin and death for us. That If we'll place our faith in him, one of these days he will come back and take us to heaven to be with him forever and ever and ever and ever. He's going to completely reverse the, the consequences of the fall. Are you ready? That's the question I would bring to you this morning. Are you ready? You see, his return is going to trigger a series of events. The rapture of the church, the judgment of the saints, the tribulation period, the great white throne of judgment, the restoration of all things, and the final doom of the lost. Now is the time to align yourself with the conqueror, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now is the time to be saved. Don't put it off. Christ is the victor if you know him. If not, when he comes back, he will be the judge. Are you prepared for his coming? As sure as he came the first time, he's coming back. He came the first time as the babe, as the suffering Savior, 
Second time he's coming, it says, reigning Lord King Jesus. It'd be better for you to bow the knee now than to bow at the, at the great white throne of judgment. Are you ready for his return? Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed. Well, we're going to have a short hymn of invitation in a moment. Let me ask you a couple of quick questions. Do you know Jesus as reigning Lord? Is he your conqueror? Has he defeated sin and death in your life? If, if he has, as a testimony of his great grace and power, would you slip your hand up and down this morning? All right, God bless you. You may put them down. If you could not or should not have raised your hand, listen, you can take care of it right now. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a hard issue. You can pray from your heart this morning and just ask him to save you. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Accept his work for your behalf, his conquering sin for your, your sake. Just pray. And, and again, I'm almost hesitant to say a prayer because I, it, the, it's the sincerity of your heart. If you would just cry out to him and say, Lord, forgive me. Be my Savior. I, I want to live forever with you. If you would just, and again, the words don't matter so much as your heart, your, your faith. It's Jesus that saves, not a prayer. Cry out to him from your heart. Ask him to save you. And that quick, in an instant, you, you will be transformed from the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of light, for a destiny of hell to a destiny of heaven. If you would but cry out to him and ask him to save you. He's more than a baby in a manger. He's conquering king. Is he on your behalf? Would you pray that prayer? Pray a prayer. Lord Jesus, I, forgive me my sin. Be my savior. If you prayed that prayer or something similar, so I can rejoice with you. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to embarrass you. Would you say, Brother Mike, I, I'm trusting Christ. I am asking him to be my Savior. Just slip your hand up and down. Again, I'm not going to come to you and embarrass you. Is there one? All right, listen, folks. If what I said this morning is true, and it is, then, then we've got a job. Because Christ, when, when he le left, basically said, occupy till I come. The word occupy means do business. We're to be busy about his business till he comes back. And the main, his business, he told us, to, was to seek and to save that which was lost. Tell people about Jesus. Tell people about Jesus, the gospel message. Lord, I pray that you would help us. Uh, rejoicing this morning, most everyone raised their hand, but Lord, some did not. And Lord, you know where they're at. I pray that you would... Lord, we, we wouldn't wish bad on anybody. But Lord, this matter is so important that I, I pray that they would not have peace until they come to you. Lord, that you would trouble their soul, that your Holy Spirit, which is the one that convicts and convinces of sin, would work in their heart until they come to know Christ. And Lord, for those of us who know you, help us to be flaming evangelists, Lord, evangelists telling the, the message not only of a babe in a manger, but of a conquering Savior and King. And Lord, we'll thank you for the fruits of it. His name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. We'll give a couple of verses of invitation. If you need to come, pray this morning, especially if you need to be saved. Just All you have to do is come up and say, Brother Mike, I'm not sure. I am concerned. What I'm going to do is put somebody with you that knows the Bible. They'll sit down in a quiet place, and they'll show you from the Word of God, which is what matters how you can know for sure that your sins are forgiven. You have a home in heaven when you die. Won't you come this morning as we sing 324. <clears throat> He who can make you whole, sovereign of all the ages, Savior of Calvary, 
What will you do with Jesus? He longs to set you free. What will you do with Jesus? He who became your sin. What will you do with Jesus? He who can cleanse within. Giver of life eternal, victor of hell's domain. What will you do with Jesus? Gladly he bore your pain. What will you do with Jesus? Conquering Lord of all. What will you do with Jesus? Jesus, come while you hear his call. Follow his steps to Calvary. Humbly before him bow. Call on his mercy now. All right, it is family day, so we need to take care of birthdays and anniversaries. Who had a December birthday? Do you have it? All right. Okay. And Lori? Who? Bruce, okay. All right, let's get them all. Happy birthday to you, 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 you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. How about December anniversaries? All right. That, see, that makes sense. If you got to put a tux on and all that stuff, do it when it's cool, right? All right. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Okay, don't forget, we're having carrying dinner. All of you are invited. I'm going to ask Landon to dismiss in prayer and also ask the Lord's blessing on the food.